In all humility, sir, you are fake. Yes, sir. That's the simple truth. You don't validate the prophetic with sharing rice, giving 10,000, 10, giving money to Nollywood actors and putting it online. You are fake. You are fake. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, because we don't find that pattern in scriptures. Yes, sir. Mm. Greetings, people. It's Mr. Poole, the trigger, yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. People have been sending me this video, so I just thought I should slide it in. It's being taken, it's being extracted from uh, Pararamok News. And the point that is being made in this video is very critical and it's very important. And I think it's important that we bring it to the attention of people as well. Because I believe there are so many people that have become glued to churches like the churches of Omoto for Fen and to churches like the churches of, uh, there's this other may big, big false prophet in Nigeria who also lies to people and deceive people through charity and humanitarian um, activities. What is his name? We once spoke about him, Chibuzo Chinyere, the one that helped that uh, Christian sister who was, uh, who, was, uh, who was buried alive by some uh, Muslim brothers, Chibuzo Chinyere. These are the two major humanitarians in the Christianity circle in Nigeria who are known for these gestures of uh, humanity who are always seen in cameras, in videos, giving out to the poor or giving out to the needy or helping out, you know, those people who would have caught the public eye, public attention. They always chip in and they always come up with a solution. I'll build a house for this one. I'll give these celebrities cars. I'll give these people one million naira. But that gospel people, it's not biblical. It has nothing to do with the office of a prophet or of an apostle or of any preacher who should come and proclaim to be an ambassador of Christ. The mandate of all servants, of all ambassadors of Christ, is to preach the gospel. There's no gospel of giving to the needy or giving to the poor or coming to church and demonstrating in front of people, throwing away cash to those that come to church. All that what it is, it's a marketing stand. It's a PR stand. If they really want to help these people, there's no need for the camera. There's no need for a video. There's no need for them to be posting all those uh, kind gestures to the public. Am I saying there's anything wrong with helping people? No, none whatsoever. If they do this with a clean intention, with a good intention, they must have some sort of a fund or a foundation that is administered and that will always be taking care of these needy people. Like in the case of Omoto for fame, someone will go with a serious illness. They'll go to get prayed for. And Omoto will give them money to go and seek medical attention in India. What does that mean? Is it not a clear demonstration that there's no power there? There's no power of healing whatsoever. 99.9999% of the times you see Nigerian prophets doing charity, it's all a PR stand. It has nothing to do with God. The only mission, the only mandate of these people is to preach the gospel. When they give out 10 naira, they are robbing 100 naira. They are robbing from 100,000 peters out there and they are giving to one John. The moment he gives a certain amount to a, certain, to a group of people, they don't even give to a group of people. They have a specific number, not more than 10, 6, 7, 8 people. And all of these are given 1 million, 2 million, 2 million, 500,000. If you sum up that amount that they are giving out, it's probably less than 10 million. But the amount that they receive in 10 from people watching them will be more than 500 million. Because most people are moved by these kind gestures to say, oh, Papa is giving a lot. So let's also support his ministry. Most people that are members of Omoto for Fame, most people that are members of Chubuzo Chinyere, or maybe most people that are members of different Occultic shrines in Nigeria. They got glued and their affection was bought by these kind gestures, these philanthropic gestures, these humanitarian gestures. They felt the need to support the man simply because he is doing charity. But this charity is not pure. All this is a stunt so that he can collect millions from people. That's why they keep on doing this on a regular basis, to keep on doing charity and stuff like that. Not because they have the heart for people. They don't. They're just doing it to deceive masses and to pull more crowds. Now imagine how, people, how many people go to Mercy City simply because there are handouts being given. There is money being given. 
Church is an institution to heal people spiritually. There's nothing wrong with supporting people financially or materialistically, but that should not be the sole mandate of the church. That should not be the main thing, the main core business or the mission statement of the church. The church is about Christ, should be centered on Christ. There's no gospel that has to do anything with giving people money. Empower people. Don't give people fish. Teach them how to fish. If they were really concerned about the well-being, the financial aspect of their congregation or of their members, they'll build business centers and invite people, pay those people to come and teach people how to run businesses, how to start a business. They'll inject capital in small businesses. They'll create platforms for economic development. They'll, invest, they'll create different, come up with different projects that should help the youth. Not this once-off giveaways that they do to people, to random people, most of the people whom they choose on their own. Whenever they give to John, believe you me, there are a thousand Peters that are being robbed. It's a scheme. Take this, believe this, this is the truth. There's no charity that any Nigerian prophet or African prophet can ever do with a clean heart for a noble cause. Never. Impossible. There's always something behind it. Of course, some will say, why can't you acknowledge some good thing? There's no good thing that is being done here. How many of you have given to these false prophets simply because you saw them doing some form of charity? What they're just trying to do is to dip deeper, dig deeper into your pockets and make you pull out more money and give to them. They make more money when they do these uh, charity activities than when they come to preach about Christ, when they come to preach about repentance, when they come to preach about the kingdom gospel. They make much more money when they do these fake charity um, activities. It's, a, it's, it's an entire scheme. That's how they operate. There are many ways. One is to pull crowds. Two is to get more money from people. More people will start supporting to say, oh, the man of God is doing good. The man of God is doing wonders. I want you to listen to this video that this other preacher just said concerning this issue of the, of the giving out of money and giving out of handouts. Just listen to what he has to say. He's spot on. Check him out. In two CN of the Bible, prophet going to share rice to people. In case you think sharing charity is part of the prophetic ministry. Charity does not define a prophet. Meanwhile, let me tell you something. False prophets have bought their way into people's heart using charity because yes, they know the people is not designing. Yes, their God is their belly. Yes, so if they can give you rice, you will believe them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If they can give you 10,000 and I'll put it on Facebook, you will believe them because they know how gullible you are. Because you don't study your Bible to understand that charity is not part of the prophet's assignment, even though it's good to be charitable. When the woman cried to the prophet and said, hey, they are taking my children because my husband died a debtor. He said, what do you have in your house? His assignment is to pray. And that which you have multiplied. He gave, he, he gave her a strategy from the spirit. No prophet in the Bible came and said, oh, let's do chicken service. We want to win the people by all means. I've not seen prophets who put chicken on their hand bill. Suya on the hand bill. Hey! You see, Babylon is now standing in the holy place, brethren. Babylon. Babylon. The tactics of Babylon is now standing in the holy place. I'm a giver. But see, it's not giving that authenticates a prophet of God. Because even the more can do good to people. So what false prophets? They are looking for means to buy validation. That's what they do, sir. They buy validation. They look for the next trendy man of God to snap picture with. You will not see me going up and down to God. I don't need to look. I will stay in Salem. Yes, sir. Every place they go, they are snapping pictures and posting themselves. Why are you so, so, so... Oh, my God. Why are you so available? You are so cheap. Everybody is your papa. Some people even go as far as putting pictures of men of God on their pulpit. You are revealing your, your fakeness. Mm. You are fake. Yes, in all humility, sir, you are fake. Yes, sir. That's the simple truth. You don't validate the prophetic with sharing rice, giving 10,000, 10, giving money to Nollywood actors and putting it online. You are fake. You are fake. 
Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, because we don't find that pattern in scriptures. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. When you do your giving, he said, don't do it before men yes, to be seen of them. Prophets were rejected people because of the truth. The, the same way a lot of people are going to hate me because of what I'm saying. But I, I, I don't, my testimony is not of men. Yes, sir. So, if you notice that pattern, as they give that thing, trust me, that 10 million they gave on TV, they will make a hundred times it from people. Yes, sir. Because people say, oh, he's a giver. Then you now open yourself to them. <laughs> I bet, Lana, it's an investment strategy, sir. <laughs> you won't see them bringing the testimony of Jesus. So, we can't find anywhere that Isaiah, Jeremiah, how many prophets and how many generations, None of them prophesied about the treasury of people. <laughs> That's the truth. The solid truth. The church should center on the word. Should preach the gospel. The kingdom gospel. All these other gimmicks that they do to lure people to pull crowds. They must not be accepted in the church. They're just taking people for granted and uh, manipulating people's emotions. So that they can rob them more. So that they can siphon more funds from their investors or from their financiers. They call them kingdom financiers. There's absolutely nothing wrong with assisting or with helping the needy. But come up with a, you know, a, what do you call it? With a consistent plan. Come up with something that can enable those people that you are giving those handouts to be able to fend for themselves tomorrow. You give them 500,000, what is it going to change in their lives? This man is just for sure. You say, I'm a billionaire prophet. I give this one. I dish this 100 million, 1 million, 2 million. Do you know how many crowds will come tomorrow simply because money is being given at the church? Now, all those crowds that you see in those shrines, they're not going for Christ because they are not marketing themselves with the word, with the word of God. They're not. They are marketing their establishments with handouts with giveaways, with money being thrown all over. So everyone that gets attracted to these uh, events, they are coming there hoping that one day they will have an opportunity to be picked out from the crowd and be given a handout. So now we can't only blame the Omoto for fans or the Chibuzo Chinyerere. We can also blame the congregants. They are not even in pursuit of Christ. The love of God is also not in them. Because the reason why they got there in the first place was because of the money. These are adverts that they are doing in church to bring more people closer so that they can now start fishing, dipping their hands into the pockets of those people that they've invited or to just use those people as a proof of concept so that they can brag to the world that we have more following, we have more members. But if you, if you cross-examine everyone that follows Omoto for Fame or everyone that is in Omoto for Fame's church, they have no love of Christ in their hearts. They don't, they don't have the love of the gospel. They're just there hoping that the billionaire prophet will dash them. And that is the truth. I was actually having a conversation with one of my sisters and uh, we were debating that, no, you know what? She, she, she used to say, you know, I also used to say that, that Nigerians love God. Nigerians have a love for God. But then she said, now with what I'm seeing and with the apologies that are being attended, by some of these bloggers, I'm beginning to have a different perception about this love of God that uh, the Christians in Nigeria proclaim to have. To start off with, what is the love of God? What does it mean to love God? I know most of you think you love God, but if you examine yourself from the inside, deep inside, in the center of your heart, it's not God who you love. It's the material aspect that you think you can have by claiming that you love God. Because most of the people that claim to be loving God, most of the people that say we love God, most of the people that act too spiritual, it's not the love of God that they have. It's the love of the promise of loving God that they were lied to by these false prophets. They were told if you give God your all, you will have abundance. If you give God your sacrifice, you give God your seed, the doors of breakthroughs will open doors of opportunity, a marriage will come. They were never told that if you do this for God, you will be saved. If you do this for God, you have access to the kingdom of heaven. That's not the trade that got them into giving God. So sometimes I feel a little bit indifferent about feeling sorry for victims 
who were manipulated by these false prophets financially or materialistically. Because the reason why they even gave to these false prophets was not because they wanted a relationship with Christ. They gave away all that they had because they, they were trying to manipulate the potential benefit that they can get from their giving. To them, it was more like a transaction. To most of you, it was a transaction. To most of you, it's still on the transactional basis to say, if I do this for God, what is he going to do for me in turn? God is not a Nigerian uh, <laughs> prophet. He does not operate that way. He knows your heart. If you do not have that true love for him, there's nothing that you ever get from him by pretending to be spiritual or by speaking in tongues. You'll just be making noise to him. What does it mean to love God? To you, most of you who say you love God or you love Christ, what does it mean? That is probably the foundation where we should start behaving these, converse, these conversations from. Do you read your Bible for you to claim that you love God? I'm not just talking about reading the Bible. Do you understand the principles, the do's and the don'ts that qualify you to be in union or for you to start having a relationship with Christ? It's one thing to just come and say, because the pastor said, because me, I'm a spiritual person. I understand things of the spiritual. I'm, you know, I'm in union with Christ. I love God. I hear God in my sleep when I'm dreaming. In that time, you did not even pray before you slept. Then you come to us. No, I hear God. God still speaks. What did God say? When, when was the last time you had a time to sit down, to be on your knees and listen? The most important aspect of prayer, now I'm beginning to teach you some things which are, which are scheduled for some time to come. But the most important aspect of prayer is not you talking. It's not in you just saying, oh, Father God, this, 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 this. No, no, no. The most important aspect of prayer is in meditating. Is in you keeping your mouth shut in allowing him to communicate, in allowing yourself to listen to what is being said. But 99% of the time, you're the one talking. The moment you finish talking, amen, I'm done, I'm going, pick your things and then you go away. All you just did was to go and make noise to God. Oh God, this, sha -la 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 -la. speaking even in tongues. You do not take time to listen. Two minutes is enough for prayer. 30 seconds is enough for prayer. The remaining seven minutes, the remaining 10 minutes, just be there, silent, quiet, away from all the noise and listening, downloading, trying to find that connectivity. Not just you talking. It's the moment you finish uttering whatever that you'll be uttering, you close the prayer, you go. So where is the communication here? There wasn't any communication. What did he say to you? You think you said something because you felt convicted that your prayers were heard, but yet whatever that you said did not even reach the ceiling. There's a protocol to this. There are ways that you get connected to things of the Spirit, not the ways that you have been taught by these false prophets because they also do not even know the channels or the ways to get that connection with God or with Christ or to have that connection or to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We have been lied to, and I don't blame people, but the only time that I blame people is their resistance to change, their resistance to open their hearts and listen to the truth. Because the truth can never be contested. The truth remains constant. And the truth there is, most of you do not even know about Christ. Because we never taught about Christ. Most of you do not even know about prayer. You were never taught about prayer. Most of you do not even know about the scripture because you don't even read your Bibles. So 99% of you, you are in darkness. 99% of you, you are in bondage. Even though that desire and that affinity to know the things of God or that affinity, that desire to be in union in Christ is there. We can't, we, we, you know, we can't take away that from you. You have that desire to know Christ. You have that desire to do for God. But that desire needs to be refurbished. It needs to be aligned so that that desire does not become diabolical. So that that desire does not become like a manipulated kind of a desire to say, because I love God, God should do this for me. Because I love God, God should heal me now. That's not how it works, people. So I don't want us to get off ramp too much. I want us to stay on course. The main message, purpose of this video 
was to just bring to your attention that do not fall for these traps. These are traps. When they come and give on the camera, when they come and do charity on the camera, all those are traps. There's nothing wrong with charity giving, nothing at all. But the extent to which they do it, the manner in which they do it, it has nothing to do with the helping people. It all has everything to do with the taking money from you. When they give 10 naira, believe you me, tomorrow they'll be receiving 2 million naira. When they give five people money in front of the camera, the next day after, they'll be receiving millions and millions of naira from those people that have been emotionally moved by these gestures. They should major on the word. Let their good work and teachings manifest in the lives of people. This thing of giving is not just enough by giving people fish. Tomorrow they'll still come to want to be given fish. Build business centers. If they were doing this with a clean heart, they should build sustainable centers that can help all the youth in Nigeria. They should not be building mega churches to bring people so that they can teach people about religious stuff. That money that Oedepo and the boy are using to build those mega facilities, church facilities, they should take that money, invest into technological developments, invest into business institutions, business projects, developmental projects, and start paying tutors to come and teach people for free. Why can they do that if they really have the goodness of people or a clear spirit for them? They can't do it because they know they'll not benefit anything. They'll be spending. But all they can do is to big mega churches to bring most of you to these shrines. And when they bring mega churches, they'll select two random people, ten random people from the streets, come and get money. They give them ten million naira. And all of you that are in this mega facility, you'll be moved. Our man of God is a good servant of Christ. Let's give him more. And you'll give him all your nairas. you empty your bank accounts. Because you're caught up in that emotional moment. You say, oh, he's doing a wonderful thing. But that money that you give him, you can as well take that money, go to the streets and give all the poor people. But you will not do that because your intention also is not good. You don't have a clear conscience. You don't have a good intention for your charity. You only think that you will get a reward if you give through a man of God. Because they have told you that if you plant a seed in the church of God, on the altar, in the lives of a prophet, your life will change. That's the bondage that most of people are in. The darkness. The ignorance. The lacking of wisdom and knowledge. That is what has bound Africans, kept Africans in a hostile situation. Their lives are not moving. Simply because they've been manipulated by these religious beliefs that have been imposed on them, to them, by these false prophets. Religion is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You see them saying, touch not the anointed. You can't fight God and win. By talking about these false prophets, are they the ones that you're saying you can't fight God and win? We'll destroy all this. We'll annihilate all these shrines in Africa. Believe you me, I say it now. It will happen. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. But eventually, these people will be history. They're not even worth putting in history books because they've not done anything that is worth remembering or mentioning. They'll just die and perish like fowls. Where is T.B. Joshua right now? Who is still talking about T.B. Joshua? Because his foundation was not based on the truth. His foundation was based on deceptions and manipulations. When was the last time you, you spoke about T.B. Joshua or you thought about T.B. Joshua? When was the last time you did? He was not inspirational. He was just famous. And fame will always come to an end like a flame. But with people like Dr. Dr. Miles Monroe, his sermons are still playing today. But when did he die? Long time ago. He was influential. He changed the lives and the generations to come. And his message will never die. Because he centered on the word. That's the same with this normal, you know, these today's prophets. If they go tomorrow, you'll never remember them. Which message are you still listening to from T.B. Joshua? Or from these ones like the Benson Idaosas? Which messages are you still listening from them today? Their messages, their false doctrines, they died with them. They died with them. And they are gone forever. Because they are not worth remembering. 
They did not bring any spiritual transformation to the lives of people. They were not sent. They were not chosen. They chose themselves. But those who God appoints, those who God chooses, their spirit will live forever. It will inspire generations and generations to come. The legacy of these false prophets that we have today, if they die tomorrow, the day after we have forgotten about them. Well, they're speaking rubbish. They're preaching nonsense. All their doctrines are diabolical. They don't have a single message that is worth transcoding to the next gener generation. They don't. And you know it for yourself. Show me any scripture or any scripture or teaching from T.B. Joshua that we can still use two years from now or five years from now. There is none. You can't pick one. You can't find one. He was not of God. That is the evidence. Those are the fruits that we talk about. And these fruits can still be examined after someone is long gone. David Joshua has been gone, but his fruits are not telling, are not testifying on his behalf. The likes of Miles Monroe, they've been gone for a long time, but his fruit, his message, is still food that we can still consume today and it can still make sense today. It can still inspire so many people today. Moving forward, generations to come will still be consuming his teachings. You do the mates. You connect the dots. For how long do you want us to stay in this bondage? Or do you want us to stay in this bondage? You know, the most painful thing is to fight for blacks. The most painful thing is for, to fight for Africans. Because Africans have been colonized, they've been manipulated to the bone. To bring truth to them, you become an enemy. There's a very popular quote which says, if you're fighting for an African child, if you're fighting for a black man, Make sure you use one hand because you need the other hand to defend yourself from other black men fighting you while it's you're fighting for them, while it's you're fighting for their freedom. Because they'll always come from the other angle fighting you, trying to stop you. What are you doing? You don't know what you're talking about. You're touching the anointed. Yay, pull the trigger. The trigger that you're pulling is, going, is definitely going to kill you. <laughs> that, that, that's black people for you. And another philosopher said, if you want to give the truth to a black man, make sure you do it in doses. Don't give them all at once because they will fight you. They will, they will rebel against you. That's why when people say, come on, tell us about the good prophet, tell us about, sometimes preach about A, B, C. It's not important right now. If I tell you the whole truth now, most of you, you turn against me. Because you're not ready for the truth. A black mind is not ready for the truth. A black mind is way behind. It's not ready for the truth. Just That's just the truth. That's why Africa has everything. But Africa is lacking in everything. Because we are still in bondage. And until we are free here, there will never be change in Africa. Freedom begins here. If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. So the fight is for the mind to liberate our people. To open their eyes, to make them start thinking on their own. And stop depending on these religious lies, man. Stop be depending on these uh, spiritual gimmicks. Stop believing in these prophets. Why do we believe in false prophets? Why do we believe in prophets even? A church should be done only on Sunday. A church should not last more than two hours. Two hours is enough for a preacher to give you enough information that he has to do with scripture. And on Monday, after that, go back home. Start preparing for Monday. Monday, start working. Monday to Friday, start working. Be working throughout. Not to say Monday to Sunday, you are in church. There's a program on Monday. There's a program on Tuesday. There's a program on Wednesday. After Wednesday, there's a gathering of generals. Gathering after gathering of generals. A, a, a father's meeting, mother's meeting. What nonsense is that? All in the name of saying we are doing this for God. We are doing this for God. We are not doing anything for God, my people. You have been told to remain humble, prepare for heaven. Which heaven do you know? Heaven is here. Repent for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Africans, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. And we need to start smelling the coffee. So before we get into more things, let me say, I'll check you out on the next episode of the Light of the Series. It's Mr. Pull the Trigger. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment, to do something. Don't just be a spectator. There are no VIPs here. Everybody does something. Everybody has to do something. I'm out. <laughs>